So guys what if Naruto is the primordial gods in Justice League and Naruto x Wonder Woman movie 1. Naruto never had an easy life or fair for that matter, he always seemed to have things go wrong at the most critical times, it was almost as if fate really didn't like him, the village always treated him like he was worthless, he often wondered why in the world he did so many things to help them. As the years went by and his life became harder and harder, he found the worst thing he ever expected, his wife in bed with the man he once considered his brother, Sasuke was in bed making love to Hanada and they were so blatant about it that they never shut the door to the bedroom. That was the last straw, he was not going to stick in the village a second longer, he just walked into the bedroom went to his closet and picked his clothes and packed them into a scroll, don't mind me Teme, just packing my things and you can pretty much stay in the house, consider it my wedding gift, Hanada have a happy life, and don't bother coming to look for me, I will kill anyone of this cesspool that even tries to come to find me. They were still naked when and making love when they heard these words, he walked over to his desk and pushed a button, he took all his scrolls and was muttering while he did it, the kids have black hair because of my side of the family, boy am I a sucker, no wonder they never respected me. He was walking out the door when he saw Sasuke dressed, you can hate me Naruto but in a way I did you a favor, what do you plan to do now? He looked at him and he did something he never did before, he dropped the seal on himself and his entire face began to change, this spiky hair became short and shoulder length, the color looked like it turned red and his eyes turned as black as a starless night. His head had six horns three on each side and his face the whisker marks were gone, Naruto was so angry that he unintentionally activated his eyes, the silver color of his eyes caught him by surprise, it was the fabled Rinnegan in full glory, to tell you the truth cousin, I don't know, I really don't know, all I know is that I will not spend a second longer in this damned village. First I lose Makoto to that bastard that was your father, now I lose Hanada the girl that supposedly loved me from our academy days, Tsunade is gone and so is the pervy sage, I got nothing left in this place, I guess I will visit mom, I can stay there till I know you and the rest of this world is gone. Sasuke decided to break a promise to his father that moment, Naruto Okutsuki, you were wrong about one thing, I am not the son of Fugaku Uchiha and Itachi was not either, we are both your sons, mother loved you till the day she died, she said that maybe someday you two can finally be together. Naruto left as his seal became active and he looked like the blonde guy he was supposed to be, Naruto jumped over the walls and began to walk towards the valley of the end, a large purple portal appeared and a black skinned man appeared. So you finally saw the truth, it took you long enough to figure it out brother, come mother is waiting to hear how your life with these mortals has been, don't give me that look, you know I would never tell her about your life, I respect your privacy after all. Naruto took off his seal for good and he handed him his bag, he changed into his anbu gear and strapped his mask to his waist, I knew that you were keeping an eye on me Zetsu thanks for doing that brother. He walked in as Zetsu was laughing, of course I kept an eye on you brother, what kind of brother would I be if I didn't care about my brother? Kagaya looked rather relaxed as she was sipping her tea and was patiently waiting for the day to arrive, so finally got sick of living with the mortals did you son? I told Shinju that it was bound to happen, they were never that big in the concept of loyalty, I told you that when I tried to put them into the eternal genjutsu, you were just like your big brothers, they too tried to promote peace. Do you finally get it son? as long as individuals live in their own personal desires conflict will always exist, peace is a lie my son, there is only passion, Naruto sat down on the big cushion next to his mother's. I get it, I get it, it is not something that can be learned easily or feel nice learning, I do get it, now how about you give your long lost son a hug and tell me what I am going to do with myself, I am not helping that village or the rest of the nations so I got nothing but free time. Kagaya finished her cup of tea and smiled at her boy, for once you are going to do some actual training and not the joke the village made you do, after a few thousand years or so soon you will be ready to live your life as a sage of the six paths should, don't you worry I have been preparing for this day to come. The training was harsh but if life was harsh why should his training be any different, he kept on training day after day and time began to simply fly by, the time he spent recuperating from his exhaustion he spent talking with his mother and brother, they found the things he went through to be rather funny at times. After such a long time he finally decided that his training was complete, his mother and brother agreed, they did however knew he would need to have better clothes than what he wore, they prepared a replacement set of clothes that would never wear out. They were mostly black with several plates of red armor on the pants and vest, fingerless gloves and black boots both reinforced with the red metal, his vest had a black hood that he could pull up and as be did the hood became reinforced with the red metal plating. His sword was a black katana with a blood colored hilt, his twin red trench knives were strapped to his hips. Kagaya told him if he ever became tired of the mortal world he could return to her and Zetsu, I am your mother Naruto, I will always be glad to receive you back home with open arms, 
do try to make friends Naruto, life can be lonely in the mortal world without them. Naruto having abandoned his disguise he smiled at his mother, I know mother, don't you worry, I know Zetsu will keep an eye on me. Naruto was gone and she could not help but to wish that he also would find one woman that loved him just a fraction of how much she loved him, Zetsu wished his brother good luck. The landmass had gone through a rather interesting change, he just kept walking on the ocean as he enjoyed the feel of the water, he did so enjoy that he could walk, jump and slide through the surface without worrying about anyone bothering him, in truth he was being watched by someone and that someone had enough of this man walking on his domain without as much as a greeting. The ruler of that domain was a man by the name of Poseidon, he was one of three brothers and sons of the long dead titan Kronos, he decided to see what this man was planning to sow and to introduce himself, since the red haired man clearly had no idea he was there or that the domain he walked on was actually his. He rose from the water and formed human sized version of himself, would you mind not kicking the waves that hard? They send ripples down to my home and I am having a rather tough time sleeping my nap, I am Poseidon by the way and you are? Naruto was surprised and he fell down into the water, he finally go out of it and dried himself off, Naruto, Naruto Okutsuki, nice domain you have Poseidon, I have to tell you I am loving what you did with the water, it is so much easier to control and walk on, now I know you are busy but I do need to find a place to settle, build a home you understand. That was when he realized that this man was actually trying to get his attention when he was doing those things, he could not help but to laugh, oh, is that all? Sure I know this little land over that way, it has lovely beaches and plenty of stone for you to make a home out of, come follow me, I will show the place, I am sure you are going to love it. As they walked to the place they chatted about many thing and by the time they made it to the place which was a rather nice island the two became good friends, I should probably introduce you to my brothers, but first I should let you settle in, I will bring plenty of fish so don't worry about the meat, you might need to grow some fruits and grains, one of my brothers is a big eater after all. He made a few thousand shadow clones and began constructing a rather nice mansion on the island using elemental manipulation, after he was done and the clones banished he had to admit it was a rather nice humble home, he grew some fruits and vegetables as he got comfortable in his new home. He had a quick nap and the thing that woke him up was the annoying sound of thunder, thunder without a cloud in the sky, this had better be a joke, because I don't find it funny at all, he got up and walked towards where the sound was coming from, that was when he saw two men fighting each other in front of his home. Okay, who was the genius that decided to fight in my garden? You don't introduce yourselves and the first thing you do is kill most of my garden. Just who are you and why are you fighting in the first place? The two men didn't even answer his questions, that was when his new friend arrived with plenty of fish as he promised, don't tell me, my brothers were rough housing in your garden ad they didn't introduce themselves or ask permission did they? I apologize for their rudeness Naruto, the man in the black robe is my brother Hades, and the one in white is my other brother Zeus. Naruto helped with the load of fish and thanked his friend, I am Naruto Okutsuki, now if you will excuse me I had this lovely dinner planned for us, but since you two destroyed my garden I will have to regrow those trees, sorry if the dinner will be a little late my friend but if you want to have someone to blame, then feel free to blame your brothers. Hades stretched out his hand and all the dead trees came back to life as if nothing happened, you are in the right to be upset, I would be too if someone damaged my home, you really need to have someone watch out as a guard here, humans can be so inconsiderate and rather selfish just like my brother, Hades was clearly talking about Zeus since he was looking at him when he finished saying that. Why should I apologize to a mere mortal that somehow befriended our brother? I am the king of the gods and so I can do whatever I so happen to wish to do, Poseidon and Hades were shaking their heads at this, Naruto knew that he didn't want him to show up and do this again, he decided to give him a formal introduction. There are several wrong things you said about me, first, I am no mortal, second no matter what you are or who you are you need to respect other people's home or others will not respect yours, lastly I am a little busy so I will give you a formal introduction during dinner, now if you will excuse me, I need to cook for four people and as I've been told one is a big eater. With a single hand sign he made thousands of clones and they took care of preparing the dinner, as the four men sat down and he set the biggest plate in front of Zeus he began his formal introduction as his black clothing began to change and show the red plating on it. I am Naruto Okutsuki, also known as the son of the, the two primordials, Kagaya primordial of chaos and Shinju primordial of order, I am the third son and primordial of peace, my eldest brother is the primordial of justice and my second brother is the primordial of wisdom, now let's sit before this food grows cold. Hades found this to be quite funny since his brother almost looked troubled by the realization that the primordials were very much alive, Poseidon decided to start the dinner conversation. Naruto if you represent peace why do you wear armored clothes and have weapons? Poseidon asked him but his brother decided to guess, because peace is often paid in blood, 
He might be the primordial of peace but he is also the one for war if I am not mistaken, nice looking sword by the way. I got a nice scythe maybe we can spar after dinner, I like to work out after dinner. Naruto smiled and indeed nodded his head in agreement, Hades speaks true, I do represent both peace and war but war in his human world needs very little in a way of influencing it, I merely try to keep it honorable, two groups of humans given enough time they will start a war for the smallest of disagreements, peace is harder to maintain than war after all. The only thing Zeus seemed to agree was that the food was wonderful, I should really ask you to share these recipes with my wife, Hera would simply love to learn new recipes. Zeus began to understand him more and more, he actually told him he would have very little to actually worry about, their pantheon was actually doing a pretty good job of taking care of the mortal plane, so he didn't really need to do as much as he once had to do. Hades said it in another way, he is pretty much saying that his children and other relatives have complete control of both your domains and since they are good at their duties in both domains you have an ungodly amount of free time to enjoy your never-ending life, personally I call that being sentenced to a life of boredom, but then again I do have a massive library you can borrow books from. His two brothers glared at Hades when he said that, Zeus was the only one actually say anything about it, hold on Hades, we both asked to borrow books, scrolls and other reading materials from you and you have denied us every time, you offered to let him borrow books to a person you just met. Poseidon indeed wanted to know the reason, Hades was very straightforward on his reason, brothers I have let you both borrow a book or scroll from my library and in these thousands of years when have you ever tried to return them? Never that is when, I allowing him to borrow things from my library because I have a feeling that he will return them. Hades became good friends with him and even made an entrance to his domain on the island Naruto built his home, Naruto eventually had more and more Olympian guests and so he was in need to expand his island home. Poseidon actually helped him when it came to the building, Hera almost seemed to have developed quite the crush on him as they both enjoyed the art of preparing meals, his library of recipe books was one reason she enjoyed spending time on his island home, the other was that Naruto was actually very supportive and offered moral and emotional support to those that need it. Hera more times than the other goddesses but then again Hera was married to what she called the horn dog of the gods, Zeus was quite the womanizer it seems and he would use anything he could think of to sleep with a beautiful lady. Hera was considered the goddess of marriage for goodness sake, the fact that her husband spent more time cheating on her than actually spend time with her or their children would have made her quite the vengeful and resentful goddess, good thing that he was there to offer her a shoulder to cry on. Time progressed and they became good friends except for two deities, Zeus became quite distant with him when he imprisoned Hades because he believed that his brother was trying to steal his throne, this was preposterous and Naruto mentioned it every chance he got, the man was locked into his domain on the eve of his honeymoon. The other person that Naruto kept avoiding as if she had a contagious disease was Aphrodite, the goddess of love seemed to find it quite a challenge to find some way for Naruto to experience romance, he spent most of his days training, reading and learning but not dating and that was not something she was willing to stand. The lady was beautiful, there is no arguing with that but she was stubborn, Naruto why will you not consider going out on a date? I happen to know a thing about love you know, I imagine there are millions of women that would simply love to be in a relationship with you. Naruto looked at her that one night and said to her quite plainly, even if I date or even marry those women would grow old, wither and die, I already went through that once and I don't plan on doing it again, my wife Makoto was the light of my world, I will never wear anything other than my armor and I have done so since the day she died. She jumped at a perceived chance and told him she was available, she could date him, even marry him, my family believes that cheating is a fatal sin, if I marry and my wife cheats on me, I would honor bound to kill her. From that day on he kept avoiding her every time she came to his island or he went to Olympus, it was one day that Zeus did the other thing Hera never forgave him about, after thousands and thousands of years he passed a judgment that Naruto was forbidden to enter Olympus. The reason that he accused Naruto of actually having an affair with his wife, it was preposterous and untrue, she would gladly say she loved him dearly, but that was to be expected as he was her only emotional support, she loved him as her dearest and most trusted friend. In the end, a deal was made between Naruto and Zeus, he would leave his island to his friend's wife and Hades was allowed to exit his realm one day per month, he would not he allowed to leave the island and the only man that was ever allowed on it was Naruto. Hades did not like this one bit as this was pretty much making Naruto sacrifice the home he built with his two hands, Naruto why are you accepting this? This will make you homeless and a wanderer for a very long time, why do you accept such an unfair one-sided deal? Naruto in full gear and armored he looked at his friend and smiled, I may not find love my friend but you have, this deal will let you experience the happiness I once had, I wish you much happiness to you and your wife. Persephone looked at him as he was about to leave and decided to tell him to delay his departure, he did as she asked since to him she was a good friend as well, 
Naruto for your sacrifice I make this vow. Should one of my daughters ever find in her heart love for you, should she ever fall in love with you, that daughter will have my blessing and my husband's to marry you. Hades made a promise as well, to you my friend and more loyal than my own brother to me, I give you thirteen pits where my waters will flow and be purified there, should you need of healing or rest bath in those waters my friend, they shall heal you of all injuries. He thanked them both as he stepped off his island after so many years of calling the place home, he began to walk until he crossed the ocean, in his travels, he helped people and these people told him they were going to a new world, that sounded exciting so why wouldn't he keep traveling on these ships. He made it to the new world and he tried his best to make the interaction between the explorers and the natives as easy as possible, thanks to his abilities he could read the minds of the natives and thus learn their languages, Columbus turned out to be a true friend but his men did not, they told him if he did not do as the queen ordered his family would be dead. It was under this threat that he was forced to pillage and steal from the people he once considered his friends, these actions angered Naruto, Christopher asked him to leave them to their fates, so it came to be that from that day onwards the crew of the three ships lost his protection. He grew sick of the place and began to wonder the land, he learned any language he came across and finally decided to settle down, it turns out the gold rush was happening or so they called it, the place he lived was a small village in the place they called the territories, he was good friends with the local tavern owner a man by the name of Matthias Wayne and his wife Bertha. Thanks to the gold trade the tavern did plenty of business selling drinks, renting rooms to rest and even supplies to prospectors, Naruto was named the official sheriff of the town, the name of the town was in the bright language of his wife, in time people began to call it the town of Gotham. Naruto you do dang good work as our sheriff, tell me why in tarnation will you still not accept a salary for your work? I have still to figure out how you keep yourself fed and clothed. Naruto looked at him and smiled, look Matt, I am plenty happy to see the people that settle here are good and honest folk, as long as I can see your boys and girls grow up to be mighty fine people, I call myself paid in full, now tell me you making that pie for this year too? Matthias laughed as he heard the question, Naruto you know dang well I always make apple pie for thanksgiving, I expect you to come and be ready to strap on the old feed bag, my kids will want to spend some time with their godfather after all. Naruto laughed as he looked at the empty cells in the local jail, I reckon I am not that busy and so you better believe I will be there to give you and your wife a hand, just remember one thing, I need to place a flower on my marker that day, so I might arrive by high noon. Matthias laughed and told him even if he arrived in the dead of the night he would have a plate waiting for him, just make dang sure to show up he said as Matthias walked out of Naruto's office laughing as he walked his way home. Her kids downright loved the guy, Bertha always was busy and with three boys and two girls that were to be expected. Matthias often saw his friend help them out when he was done in the day's patrol as he called it. That Thanksgiving dinner was probably the best he ever had in his life, with exception to the one he had with Makoto once but who would forget the day his first son was conceived on top of his kitchen table. Bertha I don't care what others say, this pie should he added to the tavern menu, I kid you not it is the sweetest thing I ever tasted, her children agreed, Matthias was smiling as he said that, he had been trying to get his wife to make food for their family tavern for a long time. You really think people would want to eat food in a tavern? I mean most guys have their wives to do that for them, who would eat in the tavern? Bertha asked him as she toyed with her mashed potatoes. Off the top of my head, travelers, bachelors, mine workers, construction workers, traders and the occasional carpetbagger, not everyone is as lucky to have a loving wife like Matthias is after all. Bertha smiled at hearing the compliment, that Annie May seems to be wanting to claim you for herself if the way she looks at you is any indication. Naruto nearly choked on his juice when she said that. Dr. May is a nice enough of a gal, but I am older than she thinks, it wouldn't be fair to her, I already buried one wife, I don't want to do that again thank you for caring, though. Matthias and Bertha always wanted to know who this woman was, but as far as they knew him he would never tell them anything about it, he would always say it was simply too painful to mention. Since he said that about Ms, May he knew they would never let up, I just hope you two never have to go through what I did, there is no pain in the entire world that can match the pain of having to organize the funeral of your own children or the words to describe it. They did ask him how many kids did he do that for, in a very heartfelt moment, he had to do that twice in a row, his son Itachi and Sasuke both died on the same day. Sorry to make ya remember that, I guess you still need to find the right woman for yourself, it would be a waste to let such a nice guy remain single, now I know we just ate, but would you mind helping with the dishes? Matthias said he was dead beat tired from the work at the family tavern, Naruto told him he would take care of it, it was the least he could do after they fed him such a wonderful dinner after all. As he was drying the last pot he heard a voice from outside, Sheriff we got a problem, Mad Dog and his gang are hitting the town bank, 
he dried his hands on the apron before he took it off and excused himself for the racket the person outside was making. Matthias was standing with his rifle as he was walking out the door, you keep your family saves Matthias, I will take care of those troublemakers if things go as I expect the coffin maker is going to be mighty glad. As he ran outside he made several dozen shadow clones and he decided to walk up the town main road to see Mad Dog dismount his horse and look at him with a smile on his face, sorry to ruin your Thanksgiving sheriff, we all know how you enjoy the pie that German cow makes, I and my boys are just making a withdrawal from the local bank. Naruto cracked his knuckles, now I told you a few times before Tannen that I don't appreciate you insulting women, I also know you and your men don't have an account with the bank or any form of law abiding work, so I'm giving you a chance to get from my town or so help me I will bury the lot of you in the town's cemetery. One of the men decides to tell him what everyone was thinking of his threat, as this coming from the pansy sheriff who doesn't even have a deputy. Boss how about we kill this fool and take everything that isn't nailed down. Tannen looked at his man and began to laugh, you know sheriff I don't say this often, but my man does have a point, what is keeping us from killing you, robbing and pillaging this here town to the ground and leaving you for buzzard food? Naruto looked at him and glared at him, you can try to be sure, but I will bury the lot of you the second you do, he walked up to him and spat on the ground as he glared at him. Tannen didn't like that, no he didn't like that one bit, men let us hang the sheriff, rape the women and steal everything worth a damn, they men pulled out a gun when they did, however, several daggers were seen being thrown at them and stabbing them in the heart. Tannen was cut from the belly to the neck by Naruto and he died right on the spot, the entire town saw as he alone took down the most vicious gang in the territories, he helped the coffin maker and gave them all a fair decent burial, a lot more descent that the people in town believed the gang deserved. Thanks to this action his strength was known throughout the region and beyond, whenever a gang or a group of killers even mentioned of making themselves famous or infamous depending of who listened, by attracting the town of Gotham they only said the one comment that was true for years to come. If you attack the town of Gotham and its people, it's your funeral, nobody and I mean nobody who attacks those folks makes it out of there alive. In time Martha and Bertha passed on and Naruto was sad to see them be buried in the town cemetery, their children understood seeing the proud sheriff in tears as they laid their parents into their grave. Don't you worry godfather, we are here, we will always welcome you in our homes. Naruto lived in that town as the sheriff and protector of that community for decades and then centuries, it was a request of a descendant of Matthias that asked him to finally give up his position if sheriff, the small town thanks to the safe feeling of the place had grown to be a rather nice city, Anthony told him they needed a much larger police force than just one man. Naruto had no choice but to listen to his request, Gotham was initially built by his ancestor Matthias and Bertha and so he would respect their wish, he left the town in secret and was never seen again, the people were surprised that the descendant or the person they believed was the descendant of the first sheriff was gone. With his ability to transform his appearance he would pretend to be the child of the sheriff and when it came a time, he would have a fake funeral using a shadow clone, for centuries the people of the town believed the position of sheriff had been passed down from father to son. As he began to walk towards the first tree he made he smiled, my apple tree, Bertha made her apple pies with these apples, in the end, my friend was right she was the best cook in the entire territory, I hope her descendants still have the skill that she had and keep the old inn going. It was then that he felt that something was not right, he knew immediately that something was wrong, he began to run at the speed of sound towards the ocean and began to run on the surface of the ocean till he reached his island. The island grew somewhat since the last time he saw it, the stealth seals were still active by the looks of it, when he jumped from the ocean to the surface a group of armored women holding everything between spears to swords ran to where he landed. Leave or die. This island forbids your kind from walking on it, the woman held a spear and glared at him, she clearly was not joking. You have your facts wrong, I am the original owner of this island. I let Persephone and her husband live here as my wedding gift, you, on the other hand, I give one of three choices, one, you take me to see my friend Persephone, two you try to attack me and I will throw you into the ocean, three let me pass and see what is wrong with my friend, those are the choices you have 10 seconds to decide your fates. The woman holding the spear said he didn't mention the option of him leaving and promising not to tell of the island. It was when he counted to five that Persephone looked at him and smiled, Naruto, what a pleasant surprise, it has been years since I last saw you, you were in good health, what brings you back to the island? He ignored the glare by the women and he walked over to his friend, Persephone, as lovely as the day I saw you get married, I had a feeling something is wrong with Hades and so I had to come, these girls seem to think I am not welcomed, I have no idea why that is. Persephone laughed as he said that, you have been away an awfully long time my friend, they had to deal with vikings, pirates and all sorts of men that tried to invade, this left them a bit bitter towards me now enough of that and give me a hug. 
Naruto hugged her very much like what he was to her, a dear friend that came to visit after a very long time, the Amazons, however, they didn't like it one bit. Naruto walked towards the seal gate to the underworld, the key he used was a special kind since it was a bracelet for most people but the minute he used his chakra the bracelet would change into the key. He opened the lock and waited to hear the gate finished opening, the Amazons didn't think what he said was true, but here was a man that was standing at the very gates to the underworld and he looked as relaxed as a person watching the sunset. He stepped through the black swirling vortex and the gate closed, he really must be in a hurry, I would imagine he would like to see his grove before leaving the island, Persephone said as if she was merely saying the obvious. One Amazon asked her what did she mean by his grove? That's right you and the others don't know this, the place we get our food from, the grains and fruits that grow on this island, he was the one to plant them, we live with all this food because he made such a wonderful grove on this island. She began to walk back home and said, we might not die on this island but we would have starved were it not for my friend's effort. Naruto expected to be greeted by Cerberus but the fact he was not there made him worry that much more, Hades seemed to be looking after a much smaller Cerberus, I knew that you would eventually get my message, I do wish you came sooner, a man came calling himself a necromancer, he poisoned me and Cerberus, he then stole a book from my library. Naruto began to look at them both and he didn't like what he was seeing, this is the venom of a hydra, this will be painful but I will get it out of both of you now, what book did this rude necromancer steal anyways? Hades said his name was Faust and he stole a book called The Truth in Stars, he used the Ying Yang release to draw out all the negative effects of the poison and the poison itself, Hades that is ridiculous, you know very well I wrote that thing to give you something to laugh at, the entire thing is practically a joke, there is nothing useful in that book and we both know it, don't we Cerberus? The dog looked better and he gave him a lick from each of his heads, I am happy that you are feeling well boy, I hope I made in time, I wouldn't want you to miss your day with Persephone because of this fool. Hades laughed and told him not to worry about it was not going to happen for a couple of weeks, the real question is why are you still single Naruto? I know that there are some rather nice human females in that town you helped build, why don't you settle down and enjoy life? He got up and walked towards the table where his friend was seated in a chair next to it, I told you this before Hades, I will not marry till I find a woman that can live as long as I can, I don't ever want to endure the feeling of having to bury my wife again, I am happy that you will never have to do this. Hades had some tea prepared, if I could Naruto I would draw out your beloved Makoto and reunite you with the mother of your children, however, you know as well as I do that I am not allowed, only fate can do that when they chose to let a soul reincarnate. I tend to the souls of the virtuous and punish the souls of the wicked, sadly that is all I can do. After he spent some time making Hades laugh at the things he did while Sheriff he bid him and his faithful hound a fond farewell, Cerberus accompanied him to the exit and opened the gate, keep him safe, boy, try to make him feel that he has a friend here with him, this place will depress anyone, I am no exception. The three-headed hound nodded their heads and each gave him a lick and rubbed their heads against his head, good, I knew that I can count on you, he walked out of the gate and found that an entire group of Amazons was waiting for him. Hera help me, do I have to fight you idiots to be able to spend some quality time with my friend? Honestly, if I was like the idiot my friend is married to, I would kick you off my island and forbid you to even set foot on it again, you should be thankful I am the nice and merciful guy that I am. Persephone arrived laughing as she heard that comment, I am sure she is actually blushing quite brightly as she no doubts heard those remarks, they are here to see if you need medical attention, we both know to travel in the underworld is never pleasant. Naruto walked towards her and smiled, the evil souls of the dead would escape if it was a walk in the park, it is not pleasant but it does have a purpose, how about we have some tea and you tell me how your life has been so far. Persephone had to agree that it would be quite lovely if he did that. The two sat down after he prepared the tea, Naruto I knew you for years, when will you tell me the answer to the question I asked on my wedding day? How is a warm, caring, and tender man like you still single? I imagine there would be dozens of beautiful ladies that would fight over the chance to marry you. Naruto took a sip from his tea and saw the Amazons train, those women training would gladly contradict you, I think they would rather fight for the joy of trying to kill me instead. Persephone asked him to answer her question it has been bugging her a lot, very well but keep it secret, she promised that she would. The truth is I was married once, to the one person I loved more than anything, my beloved wife was a member of the Uchiha clan, her name was Makoto and she was the light of my very soul, my hair you always knew it is black haven't you, in truth was silver white when I was with her. He touched his armor and looked at her, even my armor and weapons have changed, I lost the light of my soul and my heart has grown colder than it once was, one of her clan used a technique to make her think she was her husband, he tricked her and threatened our children, I was transformed into a child and was subjected to horrors by the village we lived in. 
Naruto was remembering her death and tears began to flow from his eyes. The man who brainwashed my wife later killed her and my eldest son killed him. He had to escape and live as a criminal. I married through an arranged marriage was made to marry a woman by the name of Hinata. My youngest son took it upon himself to wake me from my delusions sleeping with my wife. I knew then that she really never loved me. Persephone was not expecting this at all. She expected him to tell her he was simply too shy or he didn't want to make the ladies hurt when they grew older and he didn't. Naruto was not done. My sons killed each other because Sasuke was lied to by a member of the village council. He told my youngest that his brother had killed many innocent beside Fugaku. They killed each other out of the need for revenge. Persephone saw the tears and knew the pain must have been severe for him to cry like that. I am sorry I made you remember. I understand now the reason. You still love her, don't you? Even if she is dead you still love Makoto your soulmate. I guess I understand I fell the same about Hades. I see him one day a month thanks to you, so my situation is not as bad as yours. Naruto decided to make her laugh by telling her tales of the time he spent as a lawman. Naturo, the domain of justice is the domain of Zeus, you do remember that don't you? You two hate each other, how can you possibly be a lawman and do something that would benefit the person you actually hate? Naruto just told her he didn't do it for him, he did it for the people that were suffering without someone to keep the peace in order. She was happy to see her friend was actually trying to find a way to keep his mind off the pain of his past. One day Naruto, your beloved will he reborn and you will find that light once again. When you do you got to invite me to the wedding, I would like to see how you looked when you still had the light that is her love in your soul. Naruto said that he spent years looking for her but so far she was nowhere to he found. Sometimes Naruto you find a treasure when you actually stop looking for it. Thank you for being such a great friend, Persephone, I guess I will try to find a new place to live, I hear the gold prospectors are also digging in a few other places, I guess I could try being sheriff in one of those towns, she told him why not go back to Gotham but this time, try something more peaceful. You are good at healing Naruto, why don't you be a healer? I am sure people there would be glad to have you keep them healthy, Naruto had to admit he never thought of that and so he decided to become a healer. He said his farewells and the few Amazons present said good riddance till Persephone reminded them he was good friends with her husband and herself, to think carefully before they made either him or her angry. By the time he made it back to Gotham it was a small sized city and with no healers or as he preferred to be called doctors he came at a good time, a disease began to spread and it was easily spread, it would cause deaths by the thousands worldwide, it would be called the first influenza epidemic, thanks to Naruto's talents Gotham suffered the least deaths since he arrived. The appreciation felt by the survivors made them realize that the profession of medicine was indeed an honorable and merciful profession, the university that had just opened decided to open the first ever medical school, Naruto began to teach there in his spare time, he taught them every manner of healing which did not require chakra, humans seems to have lost the ability to make the energy. His teaching began to spread and soon enough the university became world recognized and soon people across the ocean came to study at Gotham University Medical School. Midwives became nurses as the doctors that graduated made childbirth immensely safer and less painful for the mothers and thus the chances of a baby not being born alive became less and less. The next thing that spread was the practice of performing a surgery when it was clear that the child was not going to be able to be born through the birth canal, the procedure not without risks but if it was not done the mother and child could die as it had happened before. Dr. Okatsuki became quite a popular doctor for general problems and especially for women's health, there was one thing that he, however, would not stand for and was liable to beat the person who dared do that in his clinic or in front of him, the thing he hated was what he called spousal abuse. He put it quite plainly to a man who slapped his wife for arguing against something that was clearly stupid, the man tried to slap his pregnant wife again but this time, Naruto caught the man's hand, you hit her again, and you can kiss eating solid food goodbye, are we clear? The idiot said she was his wife and thus he could do whatever he wished to her, he did slap her again to prove his point. Naruto walked over as he was going to do it again, his hand became covered by a metal coating and with the hand covered like it was he slapped her husband hard enough to send him flying across the room and into a wall. Naruto walked over to the wall and pulled him out, are we clear? He asked his eyes showing a dead serious glare and his normal black eyes became silver with rings showing in his irises, yes, doctor I promise I won't do it again. He healed the man since he saw he was not lying, you love your wife or otherwise, you wouldn't have married her. You can argue with each other, you may have different points of view but since you love her value her opinion as well, listen to her and try to come up with a solution that both can agree with. The men who listened realized that the doctor was right, 
It was stupid beyond belief to harm the woman who they loved for something as petty as hearing an opinion that was not what they decided in the first place, they had a partner, not a blind obedient slave. The final straw in this was when someone told him he was not even married, since he was not married he didn't know what the hell he was talking about and so he should not give advice about things he looked too young to even know about. He stepped close to the man who said that and he did something nobody expected, he told them something deeply personal, I was married for over 10 years, my wife was murdered and my children due to depression killed each other, now I will tell you this no pain compares to have to bury your own children, so when I speak of marriage I know what I am talking about, and thank you ever so much for the salt for my old wound, I hope you are happy. The man and those that had agreed with him regretted having said that to him, it was clearly an old wound that still caused him pain, they each looked at their wives and imagined what life would be without them, they each fell on their knees and begged their wives to forgive them and each woman kissed her husband and told him that of course they would forgive their husbands, they loved them after all. Dr. Okatsuki kept on doing his research to improve the old formulas and the old techniques, he kept looking for the elusive cure-all pill, as a deity he could have willed it into being but where is the challenge and fun in doing that? The easy path may seem the best but an achievement that was earned easy would never feel as good as one that was earned. Persephone was right about trying something other than law enforcement, he was quite happy to see the smiling faces of a patient and their families when he cured them, it made his day when he gave hope to a young couple the chance to be truly happy. His days didn't feel as long anymore because of his schedule, the life of a doctor can be quite hectic and if you couple that with his own classes he taught at medical school, it would make people wonder how he kept up with things. He was seen only drinking tea after all and he rarely went out to eat. The students were to focus to really pay attention and the others in the hospital simply were too busy with home and the hospitals, Gotham in the span of 30 years had 8 hospitals and had grown to be a million people in population, it was no wonder since the city was probably the best place to study medicine. As the years went by and he would pretend that he was the child and later descendant of Naruto, meaning himself, he managed to keep appearances and thanks to the henge technique he was able to keep this up for a very long time. War finally came and he didn't enjoy this one bit, the first world war or as people called it the war to end all wars, Naruto, of course, knew better, he was sent as a field doctor and boy were the doctors in the field hospital happy to have someone as talented as him. One day the so-called enemy tried to attack the field hospital, Naruto didn't like this one bit, the attacking of non-combatants was not something he was willing to let happen, he was able and willing to teach the enemy a valuable lesson in morals. He told the doctors and nurses to stay in the field hospital, he would take care of the rude people outside, as he walked out he made a hand sign and the small group of enemy soldiers and an officer were unaware they had been surrounded and outnumbered ten to one. He walked calmly and looked at the officer, Colonel, to what do we owe this unexpected visit, I see your men be quite healthy, the colonel was surprised by his fluency in speaking German, he told him that he didn't come to visit, he was ordered to destroy the field hospital and kill everyone that worked there. Naruto saw that he didn't even apologize for saying such a thing, Colonel is a doctor I swear to save lives, but in the spirit of that oath, I am telling you and your men to leave, I will be forced to do something that you and your men will not survive, this is my final warning, return to your general and tell him I don't appreciate the attacking of non-combatants. The colonel must have found it extremely funny because he laughed at the notion that a single man could take his unit out, he looked at Naruto with a sneer and said to him to do his worst. Naruto put his fingers in his mouth and made a whistling sound, in less than a second, the unit began to hear screams from their fellow soldiers and in minutes the only one still standing was the colonel and Naruto, he held the colonel by placing a trench knife to his throat. It seems my hounds had their dinner, I always keep them guarding this field hospital just in case someone does something like this, the colonel asked why he didn't kill him like he killed his men, Naruto looked at him with such killer intent the colonel was not frightened. Didn't I tell you to go back and tell your general that I don't appreciate when you come to try and disrupt my hospital, of course, if you are ever injured and need healing be sure to come unarmed and I will heal you, now off you go, colonel, I don't want my message to get to the general late. The colonel ran like he was running away from the very gates of hell, he calmly walked over to the crying doctors and nurses who heard the enemy dying, now that is taken care off, what are we having for lunch? They all got up and stared at him in disbelief. He went to the place they were having their lunch and they still were staring at him, why so serious? Your food will get cold you know we should really thank the cook this soup is excellent. They couldn't help but feel that Naruto was quite used to seeing people die and even killing, a fellow doctor and a nurse sat down with him, Naruto how can you be so used to death? I never knew this field hospital had guard dogs. 
The nurse said that she was more scared of the guard dogs since they obviously could eat human flesh. Naruto continues to enjoy his thick, creamy potato soup, for one they are not dogs, they're foxes, second, they didn't eat those soldiers, they killed them for sure but they didn't eat them, I am having them dig holes and giving them a nice burial, that is all, they don't kill without my permission hence the whistle. Naruto took a drink of his water and continued, as to why I am used to death. I am a doctor and been one longer than most here, I see death on the daily basis so I am not so shocked by it, I also have studied quite a few things to defend myself, you know George you and your lovely wife should learn to defend yourselves, it is a dangerous world we live in. Nancy had to smile in complete agreement, I am only happy that we have you to protect us, why did you accept to come to this hospital Naruto? A person like you could have stayed in the general hospital in London. Naruto smiled and did something he always did, he answered honestly or as honest as he could, my family has been friends with the Waynes since the foundation of the inn that was the first business in Gotham, I was not about to let George or his lovely wife die if I could prevent it. George said in a joking tone that he should stop flirting with his wife, Naruto turned it right back at him and said that he better treat her right or he would take her from him, this made the three of them laugh. The cook a large muscle man came and stood by Naruto, Vladimir the first have to tell you this is by far the best potatoes casserole I ever had in my life, the thickness, the taste and the softness of the potatoes are quite excellent, you should consider my advice and when this sad war is over you should open a restaurant, you do well I can tell. The man began to laugh, you praise me too much, this is a simple dish that I learned from my grandmama back in the old country, you know the potato was once called the devil's fruit you know, it is quite surprising that you can eat something that was once called demonic. Naruto turned to the man, I am not so easily scared Vladimir, I could go to the underworld on foot and have dinner with Hades and not be scared, this is quite the dish and I am sure your grandmother is proud that you can make it in her memory. The man thanked him and went back to check on his chicken pot pies, Naruto who is it that you know so many languages, a man next to George asked him, Naruto simply smiled and said that he liked to study in his spare time. Martha was very happy to tell her husband that she was pregnant, Naruto was having his afternoon coffee when he and George heard his wife tell him, George decided to tease her and ask something he would always remember, now the only question is who is the father me or Naruto. Naruto nearly choked on his coffee when he asked that question, George Wayne, you should be ashamed of asking such a thing, I would never cheat on my wife and I am sure your wife feels the same, now apologize this instant, or my friend I am afraid the only way you will see your kid is during the weekends when you have visitation time. Martha thanked him for doing that but she told him it was not necessary. I know George far too well to tell when he is serious and when he is joking, I do appreciate the support, now Naruto where is this lovely wife you just mentioned, we never got to meet her and that doesn't seem fair. Naruto took of a pendant from his neck and inside was a small painted portrait, Martha had to agree she looked lovely, George had to agree, this is Makoto, and the reason you have not met her is quite simple, she has been dead for what feels like thousands of years, Naruto closed the pendant and kissed it, he placed it back around his neck. The gesture spoke loudly to Martha, he still loved her very much, she was dead and he was still in love with her, I am sorry, I didn't know, how did she die? George looked at him and he took a last sip out of his coffee cup. My wife was murdered, by a man who once tried to marry her for his own financial improvement, I told you two should learn to defend yourselves so that you don't have to go through what I did. This caught them both by surprise, for an instant they actually felt happy that this did not happen to them, how did you two meet? Naruto wished he had not heard Martha ask that question. We grew up in the same town, it was a small community and thus there were not that many people, she was the daughter of a wealthy store owner, and I was the son of a local cop, we met several times as kids, we fell in love and eventually got married, we had two boys, Sasuke and Itachi, our family was wonderful, and I was truly happy. He kept touching the pendant, an accident happened and both my sons and I fell down a hole in our property, my sons died on the fall and I was in a coma. By the time I came out of it my wife was murdered by my best man and I was alone in the world, where wishing I had died too, I miss her something awful and I can be calm only when I keep my mind busy so I study. George decided to change the subject, well not to put you on the spot, but since you have been a dad, I want to ask you if you will be the godfather to our child, I know that he will be taken care of should something happen to the two of us. Naruto looked at him and said that he would always look out for his friends, Martha was happy to hear him say that. The war was soon over and he couldn't help but to feel a bit disappointed, there was no winners or losers, the darn thing ended in a ceasefire agreement, so many people dead, 
towns, cities destroyed and it ended in an agreement that basically said each side said that they should stop fighting. He got back to the swing of things pretty quickly and nine months later Thomas Wayne was born. The kid looked like an absolute cutie when they saw him in the arms of Martha, so Naruto when are you going to start dating again? Martha and her inappropriate questions Naruto began thinking. Probably by the time Thomas there is a great grandfather, I might consider the idea by then, George began laughing as he heard his friend say that, he punched him on the shoulder and said then it would not be any time soon. Martha was out of the hospital and in a few weeks Naruto was doing something he never believed he would ever do again, changing a diaper, I done this before but I never could figure how could something so small just dump so much into a diaper, I swear that is the nastiest thing I ever smelled and I cut people open. Martha told him to use plenty of the tissues and be liberal with his use of the powder, okay, one albino rear end coming up, Martha was surprised how fast he got the diaper changed, Naruto said once she does it enough times she will be able to do it with her eyes closed. What was so great about your wife that even though she is dead you are still hung up in her? Naruto asked if she meant professionally, physically or emotionally. Martha loved to mess with him so she told him all of the above. Naruto sat down in one of the chairs as Thomas gave him a cup of tea, professionally there was no better a teacher that she was, she was kind to all her students but strict and fair, physically she had this long silky hair, a smile that could brighten my worst days, and a body that I never got tired of touching, and sex was phenomenal. This made Thomas blush three shades of red and Martha smile at him like the cat that just swallowed the canary, emotionally she was the light of my very soul, the one to make me happy by being near, the one to always inspired me to be better, I love her and I am empty without her. Thomas looked at Martha and then at him, I know exactly what you mean, life without Martha would seem like it was no longer worth living, you lost your sons and then your wife, I can't imagine the pain of losing your children. Naruto looked at his friend and he had a dead serious look on his face, no pain no matter how horrible can compare to losing the ones you love and especially your children, take care that you don't find out what that feels, it can change a person in ways that can never be expected and sometimes it unhinges them and they become monsters. Unknown to Naruto Persephone and Hades decided to talk about something that it seems bothered both of them quite a bit, you know Naruto paid me a visit when he went to see you, I can't believe he is still the same person when he became our friend, I am still angry that Zeus pretty much keeps you locked away from me because he fears you trying to take the throne, I mean Poseidon is not under the same punishment. Hades smiled at his wife, if it hadn't been for Naruto we wouldn't even be able to spend a day together like this, I do wonder why did he want to banish him from ever entering Olympus so much that he accepted this arrangement. Persephone told him she had seen how Hera used to look at Naruto, I swear the way she looked at him with such a happy face, of course, the paranoid king would think he was trying to steal his wife. Hades was shaking his head as he heard her say that, that is ridiculous, he would only marry his soulmate and we both know who that is, Makoto and no one but her. The strange thing is his sons are set to be reincarnated but for some reason, Makoto isn't able to enter the cycle of reincarnation, it is almost as if. Persephone told him that more than likely it was Zeus trying to make Naruto miserable as his revenge on him, I can get the soul to you Persephone, the only problem is that since I can only remain out for a single day I can't make the body or bring the two parts together, the only way would be for you to sculpt the body and Hera to join the soul and the body, Hades said thinking out loud. Persephone didn't like the idea of their visit being cut short, she did understand that it would be the only way for their friend to be happy so she begrudgingly agreed, she even called Hera to see if she would agree, the queen didn't look too happy about the idea at first, but once they told her it was to allow Naruto to be with his beloved, Hera agreed to help in this. Persephone made a clay statue of a young girl, it was beautiful and one could say almost angelic in quality, Hades gave Hera the soul of the one person his friend would love even after her untimely death. Harry used her powers to combine the statue and the soul and in a flash where a statue once was a small black haired girl stood in its place. She must have looked surprised to see herself as someone not even in her teens, her short black hair covering her head seemed to be the only part of herself she recognized, she stretched out her arms and gave out a brief yawn, so before we get into this. Mind telling me who you are? Persephone asked the young girl in front of her. Who me? I am Makoto Uchiha, of the clan Uchiha. Now if you be so kind tell me why do I look like a toddler? And have you seen my husband around? I don't like the idea of being away from him, he tends to be rather in a bad mood when I am not near him. Hades had to admit Hera did good work, not only did she bring her back to life, but it would seem she has most of her memories. He walked over to her as Persephone finished giving her a toga to wear, 
your husband used to say something downright embarrassing when he talked about you, the reason you are in that form is for you to get acquainted with the world and maybe get some rehabilitation from years of being dead. Makoto laughed as she heard him say that, I bet my beloved Naruto is still calling me the light of his soul isn't he? He is just like that, so tender and sweet I swear it would practically make my teeth ache when we were dating, even after seeing me fat as a cow, he never once made me feel that he stopped loving me, we had two boys after all. She smiled as she fondly touched her stomach which sort of looked weird in her childish form, you must have been very happy in your marriage, I am the goddess of marriage and I can tell you still love him, don't you? Makoto smiled and nodded her head, from the day we first met, and even after I was placed in that genjutsu, I loved my husband even after I died, I was forced to see my husband become a boy again and even have a relationship with someone else, I knew he had no memory of us, so I never considered it cheating. Persephone told her that Naruto would never explain what happened to them, Makoto sat down and told them to do the same, I was placed in a genjutsu and was basically in the control of someone else, the man who wished to marry me to use me as a stepping stone for him to gain power and wealth, he was supposed to be my childhood friend Fugaku. She began drawing a rather intricate circle on the ground, my husband was also placed in one too, he forgot his past and was forced to become a young boy all over again, this was caused by using an extreme version of a youth seal developed by my good friend Tsunade Senju, only death free me from my prison and Naruto became free after he nearly died himself. Hades had to agree that it was a horrible thing to happen to him, now it made perfect sense, the reason Naruto sacrificed so much to allow him to be with his wife at least once a day, Naruto has done so much for us, and all because he didn't want us to endure the pain he must have gone through being apart from the woman he loved. Persephone told her that in order to keep Zeus from finding out she was a reincarnation, they would have to give her a new name and that she would have to pretend to be the daughter of Persephone and her husband, she asked her with a bit of worry in her voice, do you think you can do that? If you can't we would have to erase your memories, Zeus would more than likely try and kill you. Makoto laughed as she heard that, Persephone or should I say mom, I am a fully trained kunoichi, deception is a ninja's best friend. I can do that as easy as eating an apple with my eyes closed, so what is my new name? I would suggest something strong, but I don't know many of the names that people use this day and age. Persephone laughed and said that her name would be Diana, and that she would be sure to teach her everything that had happened since the long gone age of the ninja villages, it was so that Makoto Uchiha became the warrior princess of the Amazons Diana, she hoped that her beloved would one day visit her. Naruto on the other hand was busy with his work as a doctor, Bruce was learning to walk and he did enjoy sometimes babysitting so that Thomas and his wife would be able to go out for a little fun, it was nice for him to take care of a kid, it made him remember the few years he got to be with his eldest son. Naruto always was a kind caregiver but never what you call cold, Bruce used to seem to love his stories he told him during his bedtime, years passed and with little to worry about he got into a nice comfortable pace, the Waynes had managed to make a rather nice home on his old property and their business was really taking off. Naruto was either doing research on a new medical technique or teaching at the local medical school, it had been when Bruce was 10 years old that he wished his friend would have done as he often told them, when in danger slam the knife I gave you on the ground as if you were stabbing the ground, I will come to you and help you. Bruce had asked his parents to go with him to a local movie theater, there was a movie about ninjas and since Naruto or like Bruce called him his uncle told him so many interesting stories about ninjas as he grew up, Bruce was quite the ninja fanboy, he didn't understand that each lesson had a purpose, they taught him things that would help him later in life. A rather scary looking man came out of an alley as they walked out of the movie and into the alley that lead to the parking lot, he was smiling and was waving his gun in circles, have you ever danced with the devil under the pale moonlight? Thomas had no idea what he was talking about. Oh, don't work your brain too hard, it is something that I always as my victims before I kill them, I am funny that way, the man shot Martha first and she was dead within seconds, Bruce was scared but as his father was shot a three-pronged knife fell out of his pocket, Bruce remembered what his uncle had once told his father. He slammed the knife as hard as he could on the ground and it became stuck in the concrete that made the flooring of the alley, silly boy, if you are going to stab someone you need to work on your aim, I am standing right over here, not that it will matter any, since you are going to die. Just as he took him a flash of light happened and someone dressed in strange armor his face had a fox shaped mask on his face, he jumped and kicked him right in the gut and hit him so hard the guy felt he broke three ribs. Who are you supposed to be? A wannabe hero, not much a hero if you couldn't save those two that I killed before you even got here, Naruto looked at Bruce and touched his head in an attempt to calm him down and make him feel better. Don't move Bruce, 
Uncle is going to make the scary man go away, there is nothing to be afraid of, the guy didn't sound too impressed and even made the mistake of calling him a liar. He began laughing like an absolute maniac, how are you going to save anyone if you are dead? Without him knowing Naruto placed him in a genjutsu that would terrify most people, the guy began to see as the fox mask corroded away and heard Naruto look like nothing was wrong, I can say that because unlike you death is on my side, why would I fear a dear old friend? The mask fell apart and revealed a skull where the man had expected a face, bone instead of skin and two silver eyes staring at him in such a way he screamed in terror and ran away as if he was running from death itself. Naruto walked up to Bruce and touching his shoulder, see, uncle made the scary man go away, I always keep my promises Bruce, now come on we need to talk to the police, give my friends, your parents a decent burial and then you need to learn to better protect yourself and those you care about. He saw Bruce smile, that is right, your training starts when we give your parents a decent burial, I could not do any less for the son of my dear friend, my brother all but in blood, now stand up, the road ahead is not easy but we can always imagine it will lead to a brighter future. Naruto looked at Bruce and he smiled a reassuring smile, Bruce the training will be extremely difficult and painful, I have decided to give you this last chance to tell me if you changed your mind, Bruce told him he would not change his mind not now and not ever. He took Bruce to an old cavern right under the very place he called home, he wondered why did he bring him to such a place, the cavern was massive, it must have been made centuries before they even knew the land, I like to hunt here sometimes for food, it is a nice, secluded spot, perfect for training you, now we need to eat something and then we begin our training. He asked what would they eat, he took out a shuriken and with a flick of his wrist the blade flew into the roof of the cave and a dozen dead bats that looked like they got hit by a charge of electricity fell down near where they were, he placed a few kanai and began roasting them with a fire jutsu. He was done cooking pretty quickly and he sat down and took one of the dead bats and gave it to Bruce, don't look at me like I am insane, food is food and this tastes just like roasted chicken, it is at least a whole lot better than I had to eat growing up, Naruto told him as he picked one for himself and began eating it. Bruce had to ask what did he eat when he was growing up. Naruto looked at him and told him he had to dig through the garbage of restaurants in his hometown to get food to survive, after hearing that he too began to eat the roasted bat, it wasn't so bad after all, it did take like roasted chicken. Now first we work out our bodies, then our minds and finally our skills, weapons and tools will only get you so far, the first lesson is this, the real danger is not the blade but the person who is holding it, an example I could kill a dozen people with a butter knife, but an amateur would fall and get himself cut or injured with the same knife. Bruce asked if he could kill people, why didn't he kill the scary man before he killed his parents, he knew the question was going to come eventually so he decided to get a jump start, if Thomas had done as I told him, use the kanai I gave him like you did, I would have arrived in time to save your parents, revenge was not my priority, you were, you needed me to keep you safe and so I did. Bruce this is my second lesson, those who abandon their duty are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum, always remember that you must always protect those precious to you, losing them will hurt like nothing I can put into words. The two finished eating the bats and buried the bones, Naruto said that it was done to thank the bats for providing them with a meal, the next morning he felt Naruto waking him up, he wasn't sure but he was certain that it wasn't even 6 in the morning. Uncle it's too early, can't I sleep some more? Naruto laughed as he heard those words. No Bruce, we got a lot to do today, first you need to follow me, I got something to show you. Bruce was slowly whipping his eyes as he followed him and then he found a massive training field built on the cave floor. Let's go easy today since it is your first day training, run around the field 500 times, 500 push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, punches and kicks, that should be a nice and easy warm-up, Bruce couldn't believe he called that easy, but he had another question in mind, he asked him where the training field came from. Naruto sat down as he looked at him enter the training field and answered. It is quite simple Bruce, I built it when you were asleep last night, nothing too difficult for me, now quit stalling and get to work, we got a busy schedule in little time, Bruce complained about him being a slave driver and went to do as he asked. After a couple of hours he was done with his not so kind workout, next we learned to fight and to handle weapons, Naruto took great care not to injure him too much and he was surprised to see that Bruce was picking the combat style pretty good, he taught him how to use a kanai, katana and shuriken or as Bruce called them shooting stars. At night he got some more bats and some water from a nearby spring, now we do this every day, after one week we increase the repetitions by 100, don't give me that look Bruce, I did the same thing when I was 6 years old, 
now eat up and don't forget to bury the bones and say thanks. The training was brutal but effective, Bruce got better and better as time progressed and after five years he was according to Naruto at genin level, Bruce became more and more serious as time progressed and even stopped calling him uncle, he preferred to call him master, if there was something that he often would feel is that he wished he never had to train him so hard, he missed seeing the carefree boy that once called him uncle. After 10 years and Bruce reached the age of an adult he fought him and seeing that he had made enough progress in his training he told him that his training was now complete, what will you do now master? Bruce I have to check on my old friends, you no longer need me, but you know what to do if you ever find yourself in a situation that you can't deal on your own, now, what is this emblem on your suit? I know you ate your fair share of bats but why place it on your combat suit? Bruce looked at him and said for the same reason that he wore a fox mask, you taught me that anonymity was a useful tool, I am only following your example, master, I decided to be one with the knight and to use the image of the bat to frighten my enemies, just like you chose the fox. Bruce laughed and asked him should he refer to him as Bruce or as Batman, Bruce liked that name for some reason and standing proudly with his bat-shaped weapons and tools he proudly said that yes he was Batman. Naruto felt that Bruce was now able to decide on how to live his life, he was an adult and as far as defend himself he was better off than most special forces troops, the one thing he never got him to get over was the one thing he wished he still had, it was the innocence that killing was unnecessary and that anyone could be saved. Years as a ninja taught him the world can be a cruel and merciless place and sometimes to save a hundred you had to kill one or more people to actually save the most number of people, the willingness to kill someone or a group of people for the greater good was not an easy lesson to learn and it was even harder to teach. I do hope you manage to keep your non-lethal philosophy Bruce, for however long you can. He decided that it was a good time to visit his friends and see if they were doing alright, plus he needed to see if his dog was doing alright, he began to run at high speeds towards the coast and then he began running on the water, he was making good progress and as far as he could tell nobody was able to see him. As he reached the island he knew something was new since he wasn't greeted by the usual unfriendly welcoming party, he walked over to the main compound and began to activate his eyes his silver eyes began to look for Persephone fearing the worst, he saw her fighting against someone who he had no clue who it was but still somehow found her attractive and very familiar. He ran to where they were fighting and as Persephone was about to be hit he rushed in and caught the person attacking and she looked surprised when he stopped her hit with one hand, even after all these years my man certainly can still make an entrance, here I was thinking Naruto had gone soft in these years of peace. Persephone, are you alright? Naruto asked her and she heard him making her smile. I am fine, Naruto, nice to see you still care, I am a little angry that you interrupted my sparring match with my daughter but I guess you just wanted to protect me, now mind telling me how long you plan to hold my daughter like that. He didn't realize that he was holding her rather close and he had his arms wrapped around her waist, to anyone else, it would look like a couple holding each other after missing each other for a long time, to the Amazons, it was an upfront that he dared to hold their princess in such an intimate way. Sorry. I guess I should apologize, I guess I acted out of sheer instincts, I am Naruto, Naruto Okatsuki, I hope I haven't offended you miss, Makoto smiled as he probably still thought that she was dead, she was let go but deep down inside she wanted to he held by him some more, she missed the feeling of those magnificent muscles pressing against her. I am not offended at all, in fact, I wish you would hold me even closer, I am Diana and you must be the friend my mother and father often talked about, she was now the one leaning on him and she could tell that he liked the feeling. To what do I owe this unexpected visit Naruto, it has been years since your last visit, not that I am complaining mind you, we had a bit of an accident and we actually need you to help us restore a small part of the grove, we have been making do with fish. Naruto was shaking his head as he understood what the problem was, more than likely this meant that someone had used an improvised fire jutsu but that was strange to him since nobody in the world could use chakra anymore, he decided to go to the grove using the seal. He flashed away catching Makoto by surprise, he didn't use that jutsu when they were married, it was a jutsu developed by his father, and so he didn't know it, he must have undergone some severe training since she last saw him. She ran to where the grove was and as she got there she saw something she never expected, the plants in the grove seemed to be getting better and stronger as he had his hands on the ground, the grove was back the way it was when he made it long ago in no time at all, this makes no sense, people can't use chakra anymore, mother pretty much cut humans off generations ago, yet this damage was done with fire elemental chakra. She smiled as she heard that, in truth, she was trying to practice her fire jutsu arsenal but she unintentionally harmed the grove, mother will he happy to see this place back to normal, 
I would be more interested in getting you to fight a sparring match against me, he looked at her and she looked at him as she finished saying that. Naruto we never won to deny an honest request and Diana seemed to truly want this, he did not want to harm her too badly so he decided to limit his skills to basic taijutsu, it was a sensible decision in most circumstances but the sparring match was not a normal sparring duel, he didn't know that her rope had special properties. As he kept evading her attacks, she became more and more impressed with him, he was even better than what she remembered when the two lived as husband and wife, she also saw that he did care since he limited his arsenal and reduced his strength, this made her somewhat happy that deep down he knew who she really was. The real reason for the sparring match was to get to use her rope, the one thought that often tormented her would finally be cleared, the idea that in his heart was to remain faithful to their love or did he abandon it after he saw her die. As the sparring match came to a close she used her rope to lasso him and pulled him close, I know you consider me beautiful, I can tell from the way you looked at me, I have one question and I need to know the truth, this rope will make you tell no lies. Naruto looked at her with a dead serious look on his face, she asked the questions she needed to have answered, why haven't you dated, even married anyone these thousands of years? I hear even Hera had a bit of a crush on you, Naruto tried as he might the rope made him answer the question. I am married. I love my wife with all my heart and soul, how could I even think of entering into a relationship willingly when I always love Makoto? Diana was not expecting this answer, he must be in constant torment since he missed her so much, she had hoped that her absence had not caused him pain but the tears running down his face said that was not the case. Are you faithful to your wife? This Makoto you mentioned, Naruto said that he couldn't live if he ever was willingly unfaithful to the person he loved. Diana was smiling almost singing in sheer joy as he said that, Naruto your wife lives, and she is closer to you than you realize, she loves you too and if you make a privacy seal I will be able to tell you, the only other way is by using Tsukuyomi, so your choice, as for me I prefer the genjutsu as it will allow me to talk with you longer without wasting too much time. His eyes activated and with a single look, he placed her under the Tsukuyomi genjutsu, she was not tied to the cross instead it looked like a prairie and it was a field of flowers, we are in the world of Tsukuyomi, I control everything here, now tell me what you wish to say, where is my beloved wife? Diana stepped closer to him and as she wrapped her arms around his neck, he heard her say something that he never considers him saying, for the Uchiha clan head you certainly aren't seeing very well, are you? I am standing with my arms around you very much the same way I did the day we got married. Naruto looked confused and asked her why would she say that her name was Diana then? She kissed him lovingly on his lips and as she broke the kiss she told him the reason, Hades brought my soul from the underworld during his monthly visit, Persephone made my new body and Hera united my soul and body to allow me to be reborn. Diana smiled as he began to place everything together, I don't imagine Zeus would be too happy about that, is that the reason why you told me your name is Diana? Instead of telling me it was you Makoto, she said it was if she or anyone in the current world was to speak where others could listen. Zeus would know his wife was reborn and thus he would do everything in his power to reverse that and send her back to the underworld, he passed the law that no one could escape the underworld, it is the law that keeps Hades and Persephone separate for all time except got that single day a month. You certainly have changed a lot since we last met, I could still remember those horrible food cravings you had when you were pregnant with Sasuke, pickle flavored dango, I had to learn to make that sweet from Anko to be able to make it for you. She laughed as she remembered those days, you were as bad yourself, screaming for morphine as you held my hand the day Itachi was born, the doctor said that he could not give me any since it could be dangerous for our child, you told him it was not for me but for yourself. Naruto looked at her and smiled, you broke every bone in my hand that day you know, all because you wanted to have our first child through natural childbirth, I am glad when Sasuke was born I managed to at least use pressure point therapy. She placed her head on his chest and was happy to hear him heartbeat, I wish I could be with you forever, to sleep in your arms again and enjoy my favorite pillow once again, at the very least I wish we could make love once in a while, we haven't been together like that for thousands of years, I am willing to bet you hunger for me as much I hunger for you. Naruto looked into her eyes and when they were at eye level he wrapped his arms around her, my beloved, that would make me very happy, I missed you so much you can't see it but I meant every word I told you long ago, you are the light of my soul, I can't ever truly be happy without you by my side. She smiled and nodded her head, you are the warmth of mine as well, I guess we both need each other, too bad we can't make love here, though, this is just our minds after all, don't despair my beloved husband, we will be together and away from the eyes of those who would keep us apart, Zeus can't send me to the underworld from anywhere but here, 
I love our home, but if I must leave it to be with you once again I shall. Naruto asked why is that he can't send her soul back anywhere but here. She told him it is was a restriction that he was placed under by his wife when she used her powers to resurrect her. I will meet you again, and this time, nothing will separate us again, who knows you might have already met the reincarnation of both our sons, but you didn't know it. The genjutsu ended and they looked at each other with a smile, they came together and gave each other a light and tender kiss on each other's lips, one day, one day you will be back home, Naruto said as he walked away and left a much happier and smiling Diana. To say that the other Amazons were less than happy was an understatement, a man had just dared to kiss their princess, on her lips to make matters even more infuriating, they were so angry that they didn't notice how happy she was to actually receive that kiss, every single Amazon that saw that drew an arrow and shot at him. Naruto caught the arrows using his sage abilities, thanks, I was wondering what I should make for her as a welcome present and with this many metal arrows I guess I have more than enough materials for my present, using the creation of all things technique he took them apart and made a beautiful bow and quiver. So does that mean you actually care about our princess? He looked at the Amazon who said that and nodded his head, she is the very light of my soul, I don't simply care for her, I love her, one day we will have out battle in an appropriate place, when that happens I will defeat her and she will be my bride again and this time, nothing is going to separate the two us. The very next day he was sleeping on one of the beds he once made for guests, the thing that made him happy as he woke up is Makoto sleeping resting her head on his chest, this brought back a lot of both pleasant and unhappy memories, he brushed some of her long hairs away from her face and kissed her like he used to do long ago. She woke up and smiled at him, to be able to sleep like this if only for a moment, this makes me remember our honeymoon. Naruto tell me how did we end up like that, what happened to you after my death? What happened to our boys? Naruto looked at her and told her to get dressed and be ready because this was not going to be a happy story or a short one. Makoto got dressed and saw him get dressed as well, he asked her to sit down on the bed as he sat next to her, first off do you remember Fugaku? Of course, she remembered him, he was the fool that tried to trick her father into allowing to marry her after all. Of course, I remember him. He was the one that had the second strongest eyes in my clan, I was chosen to marry him by the clan elders, if I had not met you, I probably would have lived a miserable life as his wife. Naruto looked sad to hear she did remember him, he placed me, you and our children in a genjutsu that made us forget or even distort our memories, he made you think you were his wife, that I was an orphan without any family and that our kids were his, I know this sounds insane but it did happen, what is worse he placed a seal on me that was based on the seal of Tsunade. I was made to look like a baby and I had to slowly grow up again slowly learning a fraction of my abilities and skill. She couldn't believe that the bastard had done that since she would never divorce her beloved husband and to trick their children into thinking they were his, Naruto told her he had more to say, I eventually became Sasuke's teammate and I saw how Itachi killed most of the clan, including you and Fugaku, I eventually became sort of a rival to our youngest son, as we progressed through the ranks I eventually was made to think that I was married to a member of the Hyuga clan. He looked really troubled by this, somehow that bastard Danzo was able to use the same genjutsu to make me think that I was married to the child of our friend Hanada. Sasuke wanted to humiliate me and show that he was superior to me and skill placed her in a biju and made her think she was sleeping with me, she truly believed she was my wife and she was sleeping with me, but instead she slept with our son. Makoto looked more angry than surprised, I guess Danzo also tricked our son to kill most of the Uchiha clan, I should nt be surprised. He always wanted to have my family's impress, so tell me what happened to our sons Naruto. Naruto looked sad as he told her the fate of their sons, Itachi was eventually killed by Sasuke as he had intended since the night he killed you, our second son became obsessed with getting revenge on Itachi and eventually became corrupted by Orochimaru, it seems he still wanted the Sharingan and wanted to steal our son's body to possess the abilities of his eyes. He looked down as he continued, in the fight where Sasuke killed Itachi, Itachi used his fully formed Suzano to injure his brother, the idea was that he would destroy the piece of Orochimaru's soul he placed inside Sasuke but due to Sasuke injuring him in such a fatal way the attack missed the intended mark and ended up fatally injuring Sasuke, Sasuke killed his brother and died a few moments later. He saw the tears on her face and with his hand he tired of wiping them clean, I learned most of this after I met mother, and my brothers, they helped me recover my mind and body and we spent thousands of years training to make certain that this would never happen to us again, I have complete control of my abilities and over the six paths, I also was told that you and our sons would one day reincarnate in this world. She was smiling and asked if he ever considered getting married to someone else. 
Naruto looked at her and he smiled a smile she had not seen in a very long time. My life was empty without you. You are the one and only person who I would ever love. Please understand that I can't remain on this island even though I made my first home. Zeus keeps an eye on it and he still believes that nonsense that I tried to seduce Hera. She was had mixed feelings on what she told him. On the one side she was happy that he still loved her as much as she loved him. On the other, she was sad to hear that he was miserable for so many years. Life is never easy but it sure was worth living if you had someone that loved you and you loved. I don't know when Naruto, but believe me we will be together again and this time I will make sure not even death will be able to separate us again. Please be patient my love, I promise that I will show you once again how much I love you. As the genjutsu ended the other Amazons were not happy to find Naruto and their princess hugging like they found them. They really became angry when they saw her kiss him on his lips and he held her by her waist close to himself. I'd better go, but I am very happy that we will be together again one day, I need to go and check on Bruce, something tells me he involved in something he might need my help with, you know that time flows differently here, I wouldn't be surprised if he became one of those capped crusaders I keep hearing about. Diana looked at him and smiled, you do that husband, I still need to train till I feel that I am up to par, I have been getting some weird dreams as of late, something is headed this way Naruto and I feel we need to be ready. The Amazons were now speechless and couldn't understand why did the princess call him her husband, I mean it was not like a man could ever defeat her in single combat, he touched her hip and a strange symbol appeared on her leg, a little something Minato came up with to help you train, it's a gravity seal, you do remember how to use it. She nodded her head and kissed him again. Persephone was actually looking at them kiss that last time and she was smiling at them, so the two lovers are back together again. Naruto takes care of yourself, you the only friend me and my husband have, I don't even want to imagine how angry my husband would be if you died. Naruto seems to vanish for a second and then they could no longer find him anywhere on the island. Naruto ran across the oceans and all the way to Gotham, he had a feeling Bruce was in trouble and that was not something he liked. As he reached downtown Gotham he found him with a teenager dressed in a black and red armor with an R emblem on his chest, the thing Bruce was fighting had green tubes running through and over her body, Bruce was having a hard time fighting the muscle monster off, Naruto decided to wear his armor and mask. He just ran faster than the big guy could see and just punched him in the gut. This made the man stagger and then he took hold of his arm and forcefully held it behind his back in what appeared to Robin as a rather painful way if the look of Bane's face was anything to go by. Nephew, I go and visit my significant other and next thing I know you are already a vigilante, have a sidekick and are getting involved with people that clearly do drugs, did I miss anything else while I was gone? Bruce looked at him and began shaking his head, that was five years ago uncle, you must have given me a few cousins in that time, nothing worth mentioning in front of that creep you are holding, by the way, Bane meet my uncle Fox and uncle meet Bane. I will rip you into pieces when I get free from your grip, nobody humiliates Bane and lives, Naruto put a little more strength on his arm and the distinct sound of breaking bones was heard. You are mistaken if you think this is a street brawl, this is an operating table and I am the surgeon, next time you insult me or my family in front of me I will relieve you of that arm, am I clear you loudmouth, disrespectful brat. Robin never saw Bane look as frightened as when this man called Fox say that to him in the way he looked as he said it spoke volumes, he was not kidding, now you will leave and not come back for a year or I will give you something that will take you a few years to recover from, again I am waiting for your answer brat, am I speaking to you clearly enough? The sound of another bone breaking and the scream of Bane was heard all over the small downtown plaza, crystal, crystal clear just please for the love of god don't break any more of my bones. I swear I will stay away from his for at least five years, I swear on my life. Naruto let him go and they saw Bane walk away, practically running for his life. Very well Batman why don't we go somewhere so you can tell me what you've been up to lately, the three of them disappeared in a second and reappeared in the old cave that he trained him in. So you made a few improvements to our old training ground, who is the kid and why is he with you? The boy came up to him, he was a little scared at first but Bruce told him he had nothing to fear from him as he removed his mask. Robin did the same as he watched the man before him remove his, this is Jason Todd, and you could say he is my adopted son, the freak that killed my parents has been causing me some trouble, since you were gone I took over your watch over Gotham, he calls himself the Joker, loves to use deadly humor to rob and kill people. Bruce walked over to him and hugged him, I really missed you, uncle, Jason this is the man who trained me and by extension, he also trained you. He is Naruto Okatsuki, my uncle and current sage of the six paths, 
Don't let appearances fool you Uncle Naruto is far older than he looks, and as you just watch he is quite the strict disciplinarian. Naruto began to laugh, of course, I am, it is the only way to keep you kids on the straight and narrow, now come over here I need to do a physical exam to check how many bones you didn't take care of letting men correctly. He took off his armor and he was in his underwear as Naruto passed a strange green glowing hand over his body, so what you said about being a surgeon was that you bluffing. Jason asked him as he clearly was doing something strange to Bruce. Naruto smiled at him as he continued to repair three vertebrae that had been damaged, not at all, I was a surgeon for many years and I even was a professor in the school of medicine here at Gotham University, now, Bruce, I told you many times use a rope to descend from such a height, you had three vertebrae badly damaged and could have to lead you to end up in a wheelchair, lucky enough for you I repaired the damage. He got dressed in his civilian attire as he knew he was done being treated by his uncle, thank you, uncle, I guess you were not kidding that you really do care about me, Naruto was laughing as he sat down on the chair next to him and told him that of course he cared, why else would he have trained him in the first place. Bruce I've been hearing about something rather weird going around, I hear there is this new guy in Metropolis who clearly is not human, I think I even saw a man wearing green fly around France once, I also have to ask you if you had weird dreams lately. Bruce sat down in a chair in front of him, the man in the city of Metropolis is a species from the planet Krypton, the planet as he told us blew up, he is supposedly the last of his kind, the guy in green is the resident Green Lantern Corp protector, they are supposed to be an extraterrestrial police force, and yes I've been getting weird dreams about a base in the middle of the Arizona desert. Jason being so interested in science fiction stories began to laugh, honestly big bye, it is really straight out of a sci-fi movie, they're supposed to be a big time military base in the desert of Arizona and they do research on alien tech there, it's called Area 51, but let's face it it's all made up. Naruto was not smiling as he heard that name, he knew that sometimes to hide something you needed to make people think the thing never existed in the first place, that was how the hidden villages worked at first, they made it look like they were just plain ordinary villages, but people in the know knew better, the lords and their business partners knew that the villages trained warriors that lived a life hidden in shadow, the ninja. They protected nations, ended tyrannical schemes and even fought wars against each other, five villages in all and they protected their own independent elemental nations, Naruto was originally born in the green lush forest lands of the land of fire. Something tells me we better get to that military base and do so fast, these dreams you all seem to be having are a warning or a call for help, it looks like we need to go and find out what this is all about and why I am apparently the only one not getting these visions. Bruce had to agree that he needed to know and he used his connections with government agencies to gain access to the base Jason thought it was a myth, he was speechless as he saw hundreds of people working together studying and researching all kinds of crazy looking things and gadgets. Honestly, Jason did you really think a hammer costs thousands of dollars? That the government really paid half a million for a toilet? This is where all the cash from the National Space and Avionics Institute spends on such things really goes to, these people are the real Silicon Valley and your favorite new game platform more than likely the tech that made it possible came from here. Naruto walked over to an elevator and he saw that this place had hundreds of levels and it was built downward not up, it would be a building of unimaginable size since the base had over a hundred floors. The met a woman with a rather nice figure and crimson red hair, Naruto would have sworn that she was a member of the Uzumaki clan but he knew better, there were no members of that clan left, he was born one but now he understood who his family really was and thus took up the name of his real family. Miss we need to speak with the mind reading alien, you can deny that such a person exists and I will be forced to take that information straight out of your mind, it is not a pleasant thing to go through for you, so save yourself the pain and take us where we need to go. She must have seen Naruto's eyes and she knew he was not kidding, actually, that is why I was waiting for you, please, sir, step into the elevator and I shall take you to our guest. Batman, Robin, and Fox stepped into the elevator but unlike the others, Naruto was not as trusting as they were, he expected a trap and he was more than ready to act on it. This seemed to impress the young woman as many others would simply trust in her words, this guy knows that not everything is as it, it seems, glad to see someone is not as naive as the rest of this world, maybe this planet is worth saving after all. As they got to the place they saw a strangely dressed man and him to seem to be waiting for them, Batman was the first to greet him, Superman when did you get here? And if you know of the dreams why didn't you tell me when we met? The green man decided to answer, because I asked him not to share the information with others outside this base, it would be easier for the enemy to hear of what I know if he did tell you, 
there was also the possibility that you were really an enemy in place of the real Bruce Wayne. Batman smiled. With your way of being distrustful of others, I guess you and my uncle will get along swimmingly, since you already read my mind it seems that you are the only one who doesn't know who the other is, so how about an introduction? The green man stood up and he was rather impressive in size if you never met one of the Biju. I am the last living Martian my name is John Jones, the question I have for you is why is it that I can't even touch your mind Naruto? Naruto smiled behind his mask, quite simply because I am old enough and experienced enough to know how to block my mind from outside influences, now John why don't you tell us the real meaning being these nightmares? I don't appreciate it when someone makes my wife unable to have a peaceful sleep. I must apologize to Diana when we meet her then, but believe me, I would not have done it if I didn't have a reason to do so. Your planet is under attack and you don't even know it, an alien species, the same one that destroyed my people is coming and if you don't stop it Earth will be as lifeless as Mars is. So the nuclear disarming that Superman been doing actually is a plot to leave this world defenseless, no wonder I felt like that was a stupid idea, Superman began shaking his head as soon as Naruto said that. Destroying weapons that could destroy this planet ten times over is a stupid idea. Pray, tell how is getting rid of these nuclear bombs stupid. Naruto looked at John and the at Batman, it's quite simple they were supposed to be a deterrent if anything at all, no idiot will use one of those unless it's as a last resort, why use a nuclear bomb that pollutes the groan it went off on for decades and caused so much damage if you can solve it through discussions. No, I imagine that senator who was in favor of it is an imposter, the real man probably never returned from that Mars exploration mission, now come on, people we are not going to get rid of these alien invaders seating here. As soon as Naruto and the others got out of the elevator several armed men were waiting for them, and they were not their escorts by the look of it, so the evil general sent you to deal with us. I have to say I am very disappointed, he only sent 50 of you. Naruto did a single hand sign and a dark flaming ball of energy appeared in his right hand, uncle, we need one of them alive to get information, try to keep that in mind. Naruto threw the ball at the center of the formation of enemies and something like a miniature supernova happened killing all the enemies except for one who clearly could not believe what happened from the way he was muttering and behaving. Batman decided to grab him and drag him near a cliff, he held him with one hand by his right foot as he was dangling looking down a sheer cliff, now you need to tell me everything you know, better be quick my arm is getting tired. Naruto couldn't believe this was what Bruce called interrogation tactics, it just happens that Wonder Woman and a man in green armor decided to make their presence know as Batman was trying to get intel from the alien. Naruto feeling rather disappointed again, he walked over to Batman and took hold of the alien pretender, I taught you better interrogation tactics than this, now let me show you how you interrogate someone. One look into the frightened eyes of the alien and the pretender found himself crucified and tied with barbed wire against a metal cross, welcome to my world, here I control everything, from the elements, time even life, and death. You will tell me everything I want to know, and only then will I let your torment end and set you free he doesn't seem as frightened as he was before, in pain sure, but not feeling much fear. Naruto decided to make certain his point sunk in, literally sunk in, he made a rather menacing looking sword appear and he stabbed the creature where his genitals should be, the creature screamed as anyone else would if they'd been pierced with a flaming sword like he was. Naruto then made several hundred clones appeared right out of the ground, and each was holding the same flaming sword he had used, each one ran towards the alien and stabbed, cut, pierced, slashed until there was simply no place to attack. With a flick of his fingers, the alien was back to normal, except it was feeling every bit of pain, that was only 5 seconds, we got 4 hours, 59 minutes and 55 seconds to go, that was when the alien realized the error he had made. Outside it looked like Naruto and the alien was having a staring contest, but in an instant, the alien broke down sobbing and looking like he had seen hell, alright, there are 3 smoke generators to block your planet's sunlight, the Imperium is already in Earth's orbit using the planet to evade the sun's light. Naruto looked at the alien and I drew my own sword, is there anything else you would like to tell me? The alien looked like Naruto was its version of the devil before sobbing that he didn't stop wetting his bed till he was 10 years old. With one slash across the body of the alien, it burst into ashes and there was nothing left as a strong wind blew away the ashes. Just as Naruto sheathed his sword a woman with long black hair, and a killer figure came crashing down from the air, next thing was a man dressed in green spandex, and in such a way he would make both Guy and Lee feel that he had very good fashion sense. So our reinforcements finally arrive, I guess it's too much to hope for that some other people will come to aid us in this attempt to stop this invasion. 
Naruto had to agree with Robin, this was not nearly enough people. That is when a gust of wind blew sand all over the people already there, and a man wearing red spandex and a yellow lightning bolt symbol on his chest appeared, so did I miss any of the fun? Why hello there beautiful you free to go out with me after this invasion is over? What's your sign and more importantly your number? Naruto was not going to take that from anyone, he went from where he was standing to stand right behind the man hitting on Wonder Woman in a flash, he held his sword at the idiot's throat. Make another attempt to seduce my wife, and I will end you, make no mistake, there will be no place in existence that will save you from my wrath, Diana found this extremely funny as she began to laugh as soon as Naruto finished saying that. I wouldn't worry husband, my heart is already spoken for, and you know that I only love you, not that I don't find your jealousy a rather touching, but don't kill him we might need him to stop the invasion, I think some introductions are in order. Diana walked over and looked at John, John didn't want to waste any time so he volunteered to actually introduce the newly arrived heroes, this is Princess Diana of the Amazon tribe, the man in green is John Stewart a member of the Green Lantern Corps, and the man in red is the Flash, otherwise known as the fastest man alive. He then turned towards the people that arrived to meet him first, this is Naruto, also known as the Fox, Batman, and Robin don't need introductions, nor does someone who is the media as much as he is, this is, of course, Superman. Look we are dealing with an immensely powerful enemy, one that can destroy worlds and consume all the life of a world, we don't need a punk who looks like he is not old enough to be able to buy a beer, and a bimbo who has a better chance at being a model than she does in helping us end this invasion. Naruto looked at John with absolute rage and for a long time, he felt the true desire of breaking someone limb by bloody limb, he walked over to him and he began to crack his knuckles. Robin I told you once that you should never anger uncle, you are about to see why, I don't think he is as much angry about being insulted as much as this idiot insulting his wife. Superman knew the look on Naruto's face as he had seen it many times before on Lex Luthor, he flew as fast as he could and grabbed Naruto standing between him and John. No words you could say would stay my hand, he insulted the very light of my soul, and I will not have this dishonor be unpunished, it's about time this punk got an attitude adjustment and learn how wrong he is about quite a few things. Superman saw the anger, the rage in Naruto's eyes, an attitude adjustment doesn't have to be fatal, now does it Naturo. Naruto just reminded him human bodies are ever so fragile, he might not survive his punishment. Naruto we need all the help we can get, and killing him only helps our enemy is there no way that you will stay your hand? Naruto walked over to John and looked at him in the eyes. You tell me John, what would you do if someone called your wife the insults that this man has done to mine, would you not want to defend the honor of the person you love most? John understood why he was angry, and in part, he understood it better than any of the others present, part of him wanting to stop the invasion also was to avenge the death of all the people he once called family. I would ask him to apologize and I mean an honest apology for what he said, I don't think he means to insult you or your beloved, I think he mentioned this to steer you from risking your life in something he thinks it's impossible for you to do. Naruto walked over to John and he saw him nod his head, that is the purpose for what I said those things, but so far I don't see how you or your wife would be of any help. Naruto walked over to him, grabbed him by the throat and lifted him off the ground like he was nothing at all, he then let him go and looked at him as he got back up from the ground. I have lived for longer than this continent has ever existed. I was born when there was only one land mass, I believe you call it Pangaea, you are incorrect, the land was called the elemental nations and those things you call dinosaurs were summoned beasts of different shinobi clans. To me, everyone in this room except my wife is a kid, so listen to the words of your elders, boy, you will show me the respect I am due, you will not disrespect my beloved, and when I speak you will listen, so help me if you insult her again I will make you wish you died and gone to hell by the time I am done with you. Naruto walked over to Diana and placed his hand on her shoulder, she, in turn, placed her hand on his, thank you, husband, it is nice to know you still hold me in such tender regard even after all these years. Superman, the Flash, and Robin began to wonder the same thing, how long have these two been married? John was not one to go around the bush so he decided to do what the others would not, so tell me Naruto how long and your lovely bride been married? What is the secret of a long-lasting marriage? Diana decided to answer that question, she looked at him as she took her hand off his and he off her shoulder. Why we've been married for so long I think we no longer can remember, as to a long marriage it is mutual respect and trust, I trust him and he trusts me. She turned around grabbed him and kissed him passionately on his lips, 
Now husband we need to talk in private, so let's get this little strategy meeting over with. We have several smoke platforms to get rid of if they are using the air current there are three places where the wind will spread the smoke most effectively. Batman began showing a holographic image of the world and he began to point at it, Egypt, Australia, United States, these three points would allow them to spread their sun blocking smoke quickly since the air would do most of the work. So we need to divide into three teams, and find a way to stop these smoke factories before the main force comes or we might as well put a welcome mat that says dinner is served. Naruto looked at the flash as he finished saying that, a crude statement, but accurate, I will go with Batman, he and I might come up with some way to break through the defenses. Diana walked between them and smiled, and I am going with you husband, the last thing I want is to be away from you again. John just had to put a stop to this, as quickly and politely as he could, look I like a little PDA as much as the next guy, but we need to concentrate, fine you three take care the one in Egypt. Flash you are coming with me to Australia, Superman, Robin you need to buy us time by distracting the one on Metropolis. Just as the groups divided and began to talk amongst themselves Naruto looked at Diana and immediately they were in the world of Tsukuyomi. Here we can talk as privately as you want, my love, what is on your mind? Diana smiled and nodded her head in agreement, you can't hide anything from me, husband, why is it that I feel something familiar from the one called Batman and Robin? Naruto smiled as he made a pair of chairs appear for them to sit on, as soon as they sat down he looked at her. You would be correct in thinking that there is something familiar about them, they are the reincarnations of our children after all, I wouldn't be surprised that you can tell. Diana looked at Naruto with a smile on her face, and Naruto heard her laugh a little as the truth of what he said sunk in, so our boys are in this world too, I wonder if that lying, body snatching pedophile is here too. Naruto looked at her and saw that she was in a good mood, I wouldn't care if he was, the one calling himself Robin is our boy Sasuke, ever the Avenger, and the one called Batman is Itachi, our ever duty oriented son. I guess this means in some manner of speaking our family is sort of complete once again, so tell me, husband, what do you think of these aliens? What do you see as a possible danger from these creatures? Naruto was glad to see his beloved remembered the way he used to be, I think their creatures didn't take only shapeshifting from our friendly Martians people, I could be wrong but I also think they took their mind reading ability, if so why would they allow him to send you those nightmares as a warning? She didn't look happy to remember the nightmares but she was able to put that aside using her discipline as a warrior. My guess is because the warning served a purpose that is not obvious to the one sending the warning or the people receiving it, if this was any other way I would say it is bait. Exactly they used his warning to cause us to panic and make rash decisions, in other words, these so-called smoke factories not only help them block the sunlight, they are traps, if they went to the trouble to impersonate a person in a high position of leadership, just to get rid of the nuclear arsenal, they could go to even bigger lengths to get rid of this planet's heroes, now wouldn't they? So is there any way we can guard against their mind reading ability? Naruto looked at Diana and smiled, she could tell from the way he was smiling he did, in fact, know of a way to stop their mind reading ability, and it was not a pleasant way if the way he was smiling was any indication. They want to read our minds so be it, but we will choose what we show them, think of the most painful, most traumatic thing you have even gone through, just keep that memory in mind all the time as you attack. If they see and experience the most horrible memory you have, they will do almost anything to avoid entering your mind. I myself created a maze so intricate, so detailed and so very much without an exit that anyone who tries to enter my mind, they will try to get through the maze, but never be able to exit except the way they came in, an organized mind can be a dangerous thing, and unlike them I had thousands of years to make my mind sharper than any weapon. He looked at Diana and he walked over to her, if I had to pick a memory from our past, I would say the birth of Itachi, that is not something I would easily forget. Diana laughed as Naruto picked her up from her chair and hugged her tightly against his body, you are never going to let me forget that are you. How many times I must apologize that I didn't mean to break your hand. It was not my fault that the contractions were that painful, it was my first time feeling the pains of natural childbirth. At least the birth of Sasuke was not as traumatic, I love you and would go through anything with you, even fight my way through hell itself if I must. She rested her head against his neck and began placing hot little kisses on his neck. It's so bad that this can't last longer, having your body pressed so close to mine make me want to relive our honeymoon, once this invasion is over, I need you to help me find a nice place for both of us to settle, I was forced to live away from you before, but never again, from now till the end of time, I am staying with you, and those that try to separate us will wish they never tried. 
Naruto smiled as he kissed her lips and then he began kissing her ear and down her neck, this was making her breath deeper and with a lot more passionately, I know my love, I know, don't you worry one bit, we have more than enough money to buy that house and live comfortably for many years to come. Thanks for watching.